It is day six of our cross country bourbon hunting road trip, but I am in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Never been in South Dakota. This is the first time. And y'all know I like to hunt with a local. You saw the Michigan video. We, we hunted without a local and we found some stuff, but man, was it more fun when we had a local. And this time we've got a tour guide. We've got Zach here from Barrels and Bark. Correct, yep. Barrels and Bark's on YouTube. Check them out on all the platforms. Actually, don't check them out. He guarantees me we're gonna find some good bottles of whiskey. And if we find good bottles of whiskey, then you check him out. <laughs> then you check, just wait till the end and I'll give you a thumbs up, thumbs down. You pick four favorite liquor stores in Sioux Falls. What's the yep, first one? This one's Willikers. What's special about this one? Very large selection. They pick out a lot of good barrel picks here and uh, keep a really good stock. Let's go check it out. It's a nice store. It is. Got barrel picks right out front here, so that's oh, always good. Oh. I've seen a lot of Remus picks lately. I'm gonna have to grab one at some point. I did, you can sample this one. It's, it's okay. okay. Our first barrel pick with Bruzel was one of these, and I bought one the other day. I've liked the ones I've had so far, but yeah, I, they're pricey. I was gonna say, for 100 bucks, it's like. Boulder Spirits from Colorado. We bought a Boulder Spirits on clearance in Louisville. Like they had it for like 20 bucks. These are 59, and I bought it and it was no bueno. But I don't know if it was that thing. I don't think it was this. It was their bottled in bond. This is straight bourbon whiskey. So it's different than what we have here. Pretty high malt in Norway though. That just rules me out. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> it's a different Tattersall bottle. Straight rye. Look at the tater bait. Look at that. <laughs> well, that is actually a tater bait bottle. Krogman's presents tater bait, non-chill filtered straight bourbon whiskey with their logo on it. Will Liquors special edition now with extra tater. That's funny. They got a price posted on that? $30. All right, so we're talking about distilled in Lawrenceburg, so MGP and Krogman's in Bloomington. It's just clever enough. I, I, I'd almost, almost have to do it. Almost <laughs> have to. try it back there before. Okay, we'll carry it around and try it. See if we want it. What's Soldier Valley? I think it's out in Nebraska, if I remember right. Yeah, it's in Nebraska, but it's MGP as well. Mm. Kind of a canteen. I, I like it. I like the bottle. What do you think of these? I like Clyde Mays. I think it's good whiskey. We just did a pick with them at Talladega at the race. Okay. And it's it's good stuff. They're Alabama style, just like apple juice. It's deliciously they have a sweet. Nine year, I, thought I just came out a nine year one. Okay. And again, it's it's MGP stuff as well, but they I think they age it themselves. You've got folks that just source from MGP and they buy whiskey that is ready to be sold. And then you've got folks that source from MGP, but then they age it themselves or finish it or do something to it. Cloud Base is working on their distillery, but it's not operational yet. Have you done an Old Elk pick? I bought some Old Elk picks, but I don't. I have not done a pick with Old Elk. Maybe I should at some point. Y'all let me know. I've passed on a couple of Knob Creek single barrel selects in the last few days. Pretty good price, 50. 120 proof. This is what I do like. This is a good pick. Juan. Southern Star? Yeah. We have some Southern Star at the house, and I have a cash strength that somebody left there for me. So, it's Southern like Star's good stuff. Is, yeah, yeah over, over North Carolina. We'll probably do some stuff with them at yeah. some point for sure. Burning Chair. So, you haven't had this one? I have not. They sell it by the case if you want a bunch of it. You get a little bit of a discount here. Barrel Select Bourbon Whiskey. What is yeah. Zinfandel, Cabernet, and something I can't pronounce, which is a lot of things. I don't think I want that finished. Been buying a lot of three chords lately. I, I'm holding on to them, but I you tried it. I think I've had some three chord, but it's been a little while. But I bought some in the in a bourbon hunt. But we okay. wait till the video comes out okay. to try it in a live. Now it's what we're doing, so I haven't opened it yet. Just bought some Middle West. See, I like the, the casting dark pineapple ones. Okay, That's, I haven't I tried like those it personally. It's a double oak picking, or is that just regular double oak? Yeah. That's just a regular double oak. So these are all barrel picks as well, okay? Yeah, basically what we just looked out there. Yeah, so this is the organ. I figure the further west I get, the more high west stuff I'm going to find, but it it's looks like the same stuff everybody's yeah. got. Have you tried these Ben Holidays right here yet? Yep, I have both of those. Oh yeah, those are good picks. I'm going there this weekend. Really? Sure and taste. We're doing a pick with them. It, Toward the end of our road trip, cool. we'll be there on the 16th okay. to do our barrel pick with Ben Holiday. Cool. So I'm excited I about like that. Stuff. We're trying to do a soft red wheat and a bottle and bond if they'll allow us, okay. and they'll both be cash strength. I like them, but I feel like cash strength would just make Oh, us. yeah. yeah. I, and I haven't had their stuff high proof yet. Yeah. So I think they may only be like regionally, like, well, I mean, it's regionally yeah. distributed in general, but I think 
their their high proof stuff is like really super local for now. Some Jack Daniels. What's the proofs? One thirty. One thirty for that one. One twenty six for that one. A lot of their allocated stuff they do either do raffle or they set them out. Sometimes they'll be mixed into here. They had a Rebel ten year this last week when I was here. It was on the shelf. I know it's not probably super allocated, but... Yeah, I've seen a couple on the trip, but not not much. They already got me once with one of those. I bought one of the, like, super expensive ones when they first came out for that stopper. It was actually good. It was on, like, Mizanara Oak. Okay. It's a good bottle. Um, don't get me wrong. It's not a $300 bottle. Same thing, but the one I had was, like, I think it may be, like, 12 or 13 years old or okay. something like that. I just saw these... The Widow Jane Rise, I don't buy Rise unless yeah. somebody tells me they're good or I've had a sample of them. Yeah, I like the 10 year. I think it was the 10, the 13 is also pretty good. And those have some George Dickel in them. I know yeah. I know somebody's gonna be like, you hate oh, George yeah. Dickel, you like the Widow Jane? I can taste it. It depends on the batch. I've had two batches that were pretty good. And I had one that's like, this has way too much George Dickel in it. I'm intrigued by the way of Applewood. Uh, I've got a couple of things at the house finished in Applewood. I didn't care anything for it. I just, I, I don't know. I just don't like when you start putting things in exotic woods. You got to be real, real subtle with it. It can, it can improve it or can help it at least make it different. Makes it different and interesting. But you got to be real subtle. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not judging it, people. Okay, don't give me a hard time. Y'all, let me know. Should I bought that Widow Jane Applewood Rye? We're always looking for good bourbon, and you know. If I'm going to get into coffee, I'm going to do the same exact thing. And so far, regular old grocery store coffee just doesn't cut it. You've got to have variety. Like, you've got to try a bunch of different things if you're going to find what works for you. And that's why I'm enjoying Trade Coffee. Trade Coffee helps you make better coffee at home. It's a coffee subscription service that allows you to enjoy curated for you coffee delivered to your door when and how you want it. And they source from over 55 local roasters so I can experience their craft right from my home. Best of all, I don't have to make any decisions. I'm already making way too many decisions. Trade makes it easy for me because their algorithm picks the perfect coffee for me. And this time they sent me this Red Rooster coffee, which is a medium roast and supposedly comforting and rich, which is what I aspire to be, comforting and rich. And I would say the tasting notes of traditional and warm with hints of milk chocolate are spot on. Trade roast your coffee to order and delivers it exactly when you need it. So not only is this the perfect coffee for me, but it's also guaranteed to be fresh. And did I mention that they have free shipping? I love free shipping because that helps with our bourbon budget. And speaking of free, right now Trade Coffee is offering the B team a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. Go ahead and click the link in the description to get yours. With free shipping and any time cancellation, there's really no reason not to try it out for yourself. I'm gonna enjoy my coffee over here while we get back to that bourbon video. Any gems here I should have tried? It's hard to find something that I haven't tried that I would actually want to try. You can find things I haven't tried, but can you find ones that I actually want to try? Lead Slinger 10 here. Some sort of old elk down there. Do you see Pikesville much around? Um, I have seen quite a bit of Pikesville, but I don't own one. Okay. You like Pikesville? It's decent, yeah. I like 110 proof, which is what I like. Uh, I mean, obviously it's very rye. Yeah. I tend to like ones that are a little more bourbon friendly. So the ones I've had recently that I really liked were, I just got a limited edition Jack Daniels rye oh, yeah. from a couple of years ago. And then the just normal single barrel, barrel proof Jack Daniels rye they just came out with are also not, really good. I've been hearing people talk about liking these. I bought an Old Pepper. It was not a bottled in bond. Yeah. I didn't care much for it, but like, I don't know what I got exactly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not a bottled in bond. So this is a cool company I just found out about. Far North Spirits out of Minnesota. They grow all their own grains, age it in 15 gallon barrels. You almost had me there till you said 15 gallon barrels. I don't think that's gonna be to my taste. Bottle and bond, weeded, weeded. I don't know which one of those Southern Stars I've already bought. This is a local soup distillery in Omaha, Nebraska. Some of these are gonna be local or regional. Any of these really good that you've had? This one I think will be, these Black Park Pork Farms. They just need some more time. A little young, but toasted is decent. The cast strength is good, but I mean the price tag on it is just yeah, tough. they're up there. I'm a sucker for marketing, so I mean these it's a good looking bottle. Oh yeah, especially when you've got a whole row of them. Yeah. But you know, how long do you hold on to that kind of distribution? We did single barrel select. So this is a barrel pick aged a minimum of two years. 
in the freezing cold. Which means at that color, they got to be using small barrels. Like, they have to be. Yeah, this is the Scotch and Irish section here. Yeah, we'll just look at the expensive stuff. $2,400 there for a Macallan 25 if y'all are looking for one. And you want to just give a mortgage payment. The Johnny Walker for $3,099. I should get one of those to see if it run the lawnmower. You better count your days. That makes some folks mad. Let's go get some samples. Have you tried this one? No. What are your thoughts? No. It's a little harsh. It is. It's a little harsh. I was like, it might have been because I was chewing gum before I came in, but I just, as long as you got it too. Thank God for samples. Do you have the Boulder bottled in bond? I don't honestly know what this one is because it doesn't describe what it is. You mind if I just go over there and look? Yeah, go for it. Let's see what samples we have here. No, I'm just like, okay, thanks, I guess. I don't know if there's any of these other ones we were considering. Let's try these guys right here. Oh, there's that Remus. Yeah, let's grab that Remus there too and try that one. All right, so we're starting with the Remus. 113 proof MGP. I like the the beginning on it, I don't want to care for the finish. It's exactly what I was thinking. It too is a little harsh on the finish. It is better than the tater bait though. At the, at, yeah, right up, up front, it's great. So this is the burning chair. I've had some recommendations on this one. This one was the one that was finished in all sorts of weird things. 40% Zinfandel, 40%, it looks like Grenache to me, but I don't know, and 20% Cabernet Sauvignon. But it doesn't say it's finished in those things. It just says it's bourbon, and then it says those things, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Honestly, I think it's the best one we've had so far. A little too wine. It is. It is very, very kind of whiny, sweet, but better. We're we getting we're getting consistently better. We got a couple of boulders here. This is the straight bourbon whiskey number three char. I think that's the one I've got, but that's a store pick. It looks like. And this is the yeah. same thing, isn't it? Cast iron. Well, let's just go with the high proof and skip the baby stuff very malty it's malt and then the malt dissipates into just like this burnt caramel you get a lot of like sharpie it's burnt caramel and something and you're describing them together as a sharpie note you're right honestly the maltiness is kind of mellow i mean it's obviously a high malt bourbon so it's not like a single malt or anything but it definitely just turns into we soaked it in sharpie finished in sharpie barrels appreciate it thank you you're welcome thank you all right i think we're gonna roll on to the next place here you watch my, are you into bourbon? Yes, I am. What's your favorite bourbon? Ben Holiday, the original one. The, the bottled in bond? Yep. That's a good one. We were just talking about that. I've been watching you for the last, what, six months now? Okay, appreciate it. Well, TJ. I started here six months ago, and I've been into it ever since. Okay, if we film in here doing a little little bourbon hunting? Don't mind if you film at all, man. Boss isn't here right now, so I can't help you with most of the stuff, but we can show you what we have on the shelves, and there is a few things that might not be out on there, so. Okay. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So where, where are we at? He brought us here. He's my local tour guide. This is Fogie's Liquor Gallery right now. Okay. We basically have one of the higher selections in town next to like your Willikers out on the street. They're like the Walmart of super like liquor stores around here. We do have a few other uh, liquor stores that are like cheaper discounted ones, but we tend to stock what we have of, like a big gallery like our name is. Our boss, he loves his whiskeys and liquors. Uh, so he tries to uh, goes around picking up all the different ones that he can get. His favorite is the Coy Hill Jack and the 12 in 10 years. So. Me too, you got one? Of, you got some of those? I don't know if they're in the back, they might be. I know we have some triple mash that we're on the shelf okay. right now. Like, give me the tour here, what do we got? These are all cheeses locally from our area right in here. Along with our meat locker there is all meats that are made locally right now. So my, my mother was told to get gar uh, she was told to get onion cheese. Do you know what onion cheese is? The cheese curds, okay. The cheese curds are really good. I, like I would go cheese. with the uh, ones down here. Which flavor is the best cheese curds? I'd go with the spicier one over there. Herb and garlic or the yeah. the pepper jack, the jalapeno, jalapeno pepper jack. Right there. Okay, perfect. The best way of that is you let it sit on the, the cab of your truck right up there. Okay. And the, let it yeah, warm up. Warm up a little bit, get that squeak to it. Okay. We are. Oh, nice gallery, cigar. Yeah. So we have cigars. We actually have a bunch right here. These two. Uh, the, Cohiba Red Dot Weller ones are right up in there. We still have our Buffalo Trace ones. Okay, I might take one of those Buffalo Trace off your hands there. Churchill's, I don't know what the, what are these, CAD, CAO? CAOs, okay. those are out of uh, California made uh, cigars. 
horse. The only one I like is the steel horse out of okay. cars, but that's reminiscent to me riding motorcycles. You know, we're South Dakota, we're big motorcycles. I, I understand. There was very small boats, so we reserved this, this area right here for beer. And Do y'all carry the Goose Island uh, barrel aged stouts? Yep, here they are right here. Well, let's see, what are these? Are the brand cherry wood stouts? I actually like this one myself. That's the, your favorite one, the new Belgian? The new Oscar one with the blackberry barrel aged. Okay. Age. It's barrel aged. Yeah. Blackberry brandy, I believe. Interesting. I might have to check that out. Let's see what we got here, though. Cola Stout? I've Try never it. seen this one. See, I was just looking for these. I was looking to see if you had a different year. I think I've got 22s. You know, grab me one of those you, you yes, recommended there as well. I'll take one of those. Thank you. And from here is going to be all our whiskeys, bourbons, and simple malts. Belfort? Belfort? Okay. I don't know if you've seen those at all. I've seen them a lot, but I haven't bought them because it looks like it's in a perfume bottle. I bought the 200 milliliter of okay. it. Okay. And that one there, I believe, was really delicious. We had a rye one, and the guy who bought the rye just didn't like it as much. Have you seen anything about the Addictivos? I've, I've been seeing them everywhere, but I haven't found anybody that knows anything about them yet. The Addictivo whiskey is uh, a Mexican whiskey base. The, they went on their Anejo recipe style, where they aged at least four to six years for their tequilas. And basically they went on a similar with the wheat and the, um, what is it, corn mash that they did for their whiskey. To me, their Anejo was actually really smooth and it, it went down just like not a single malt, but a blended scotch whiskey. We're being super selective because I am on a 16 day road trip where bourbon hunt in 10 different spots and I'm already out of room. Uh, have you tried any of the Soldier Valley? We were just talking about that. Did you say you had tried that one? I have tried one. Which one did you try? The whiskey or the bourbon? The bourbon. That one is uh, smoother than the whiskey. The whiskey, I believe, gives you like your Jack Daniels banana nose, okay. sour mash feel. But the bourbon, I feel, is like they went to their Gentleman Jack and almost mellowed it out so it's easier to drink more pleasant to the mouth. It doesn't bite you. It's a beautiful bottle for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. 90 proof true American signature bourbon whiskey. I'm going to have to have more proof than that, though, to get me to bite on it. I'm going to have to have, have, to have 100. Now, how do y'all typically handle allocated right. stuff? Do y'all just put it out? Our boss typically puts some of it out okay. throughout the week, and then after a week's end, if it's still sat there, he'll bring it back and put it back in his own stuff. I can bring a couple of uh, like the triple mash jacks and things like that. Let's see I what you got. Like triple mash jack is not allocated in any, like I can pick that right. up on any shelf anywhere right. in the South. But I'm not allowed to bring out a lot because that again, he likes to do that himself. I understand. Most, most people I tell to come back early in the morning when he's here. Is, what time does he open up? We open up around eight o'clock in the okay. morning and then he's here till about five. I might be around in the morning, but let's see, see what you're, what you have access to. I'd, I'd be interested. A nice selection, cool store, awesome dude giving us a tour, and more of those freaking Goose Islands than I've ever seen anywhere. I don't know if they just don't sell around here or if they just get a lot of them here, but I've been having a hard time finding them. They're pretty good. Oh, I love them. Okay, it's got the Russell's 10, Knob 9, 120 proof. I don't know what this is. That's Jacob's Pardon. That was a one that we get very few of, actually. Okay, do you know who makes it? It's bottled at Bardstown, but it's Tennessee whiskey. So I don't know if it's got George Dickel in it I or what. It's a more Dickel than okay. I couldn't tell you who makes it for sure. I yeah. Just, I just know that's one of them that we have. No, it's cool. I don't. I don't see that bottle a lot. I've this, I've got plenty of those though. Know, they're they're both great bottles. Yeah. I, 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 Hello, nurse. Do you know what your price is on that guy right there? I can check it for sure. Please. But the eighteen. I don't care. Sixty oh two. Yes, I, I, I would love that. I would absolutely love nothing more than that bottle right there. I could talk to the owner. I come back tomorrow and learn a little bit more about the store from him. All right, appreciate it, Russell. We just got a sixty dollars stag. Yeah. He's earned it. Y'all, y'all go check out um, Barrels and Barks yep. on all the social platforms. I don't care what happens from here. We got other stores to go to. Dude, hook me up. So him and Russell. Thank you, Russell. Appreciate that. If that was just store number two, I'm assuming we're getting better and getting better. better. Hopefully, yeah. We're at uh, Good Spirits Taylor's Pantry gas station and liquor store so the lesson from the last place even though it worked in my favor is the gatekeepers are almost never at the stores at night so go during the day during the week you're much much more likely to hit the gatekeepers i might swing by there in the morning 
and just see if I could talk to the owner, learn a little bit more about the store, hang out with him a little bit. Maybe we could get lucky and get access to something else hard to find. We'll see. I guess I have to do that because y'all gonna have to wait till the end of the video to see if I can actually pull another nice bottle out of there. Metal rack. It's like a whiskey prison. <laughs> Peerless. Not seeing a lot of hard to find stuff in there. The Riddle 10, I already got that. Another Elijah Craig barrel proof. Is this a A123? You looking for anyone in particular? I don't have the B. That would be the only mm. one that I would. I think we might have saw one of those earlier today on a store. I, it, might have, it was a B. Might have been a 22 though. I, I'm not sure. Scotty Pippen whiskey right there. Digits. That's, what do you think of the branding there? We're working on a, a potential Brusel brand. And that won't be Brusel labeled, which is probably a branding mistake. Like you tell me, probably a marketing mistake. We might put Brusel on it somewhere, but it is, it is going to be at our own private label. So looking at this, how would you stand out on a whiskey shelf? Oh, by the way, he's got a marketing background, so I'm just, I'm just mining him for information. Depends on if you're going after maybe for a like entry level beginner bourbon person. Craft is expensive. That's yeah. the problem, right? So it, it's probably going to be a, it's not going to be a Jack Daniels price. You're going to need a 90 proof shelf staple, and then you're going to need some higher end stuff. So I don't know. You pick, you pick how you would go, and then you tell me how you'd bring it. I think you would want to be approachable, readable, findable. So I think I'm looking at something that would be similar that I think do a good job of branding. The Four Roses, I think, does a good job of kind of identifying bourbon and the brand that stands out. I think where you get into some of the Jefferson fonts just comes off old or, you know, some of this stuff. I'm not a fan of the new maker style um, of theirs. You think I should just put a picture of my hand on it? That'd be good, I think, yeah. yeah. It, it got my attention, <laughs> but I have no idea what it makes no sense. I mean, I'm sure it means something to him, but it makes no sense to me. I think a lot of people like bourbon. They want as an art piece on the shelf. That's why I think some of these, obviously oh, spend a lot of money into the kind of the style because you want it to be a showpiece. So you want that nice look. I think bottles with the emboss is nice and really cool looking. I think minimal design stands out. The problem with that though, is you need scale to do bottles like that because you have to have those custom made you can't just go get a wine bottle and slap a label on it if you're gonna do embossing and stuff. So we probably won't be able to do that early, but we'll see. I got a gold forester bottle, are cool shape. Yeah, those are just classic. You know, High West has cool bottles as well. Jack Daniels obviously has the trade kind of the style of their old. Yeah, that well, I mean, if you just Google whiskey bottle, that's what comes up right there. You go screw top or cork? Here's the thing is I don't mind screw, I joke about them, I don't mind screw tops. What I hate are those really thin metal screw tops. Yes. And if it's a cheap bottle of whiskey that I, somebody's gonna drink in a week or you know, you're gonna put it in your bar and you're gonna make mixed drinks or for a lot of people, they'll grab these and you know, it's like a, a well mixer and you put you know, one of those pour spouts in it, fine. You throw the top away, it doesn't matter. Like I hate how like the, um, the benchmark tops just like stretch and you just never get them tight. Yeah, these are the best ones, I feel. Oh, I, yeah, and I love, I like the the holiday bottles are actually really nice. Oh, yeah. I like the branding. Uh, the off-white with the black and red is really cool. Like, I may just steal exactly what they're doing. I may even yep. steal the name, I don't know. I'm just gonna make my bottles look just like that. I may put their whiskey in it, who knows? But it's just a simple bottle. It is. And then most of the aesthetic is in the in the cool label. Bowman Brothers. You see a John Jay, let's grab it. You tried this? I have not tried that. Should I have tried that? No. Okay. The the legend. Tell me about it. I think it's blended by the what's the company that owns Jim Beam, the bigger company. Beam Suntory. Suntory, yeah. So have a Japanese influence blend into it. I think it's wine. Yeah, wine and sherry casks. And so you get that nuttiness of the Jim Beam, and then you get that tart sour that I'm just not a fan of. So how do they handle their allocated stuff here? Do you know? Is it all just in the case? It's either a shelf or hide bottles in here. You like Rebel 10? I, I like the Rebel 10 I have, but I haven't drank a lot of it. Like, I need to go back to it. It's been a while. When I remember getting it for the first time and opening it, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I like the Rebel 100. What in the world is this nonsense? Straight rye whiskey with a lip tattoo. It's 25% off, so apparently the marketing worked. Lip service. Savage and Cook. In California. Dave Who? Dave Finney's background is in wine. Okay. But about five or six years ago, we started producing bourbon. 
Bourbon most of its age in a lot of his Cabernet barrels that he produces throughout all of his vineyards. Ah, is that what that is? That's what that is. It's okay. one of them. He just did a collaboration with Scotty Pippen. It's the digital. Oh, yeah. We were just looking at the... I noticed the bottles were very similar. But now he's gone away from the black bottles because he realized people weren't taking him seriously because nobody could see the products. Yeah. When it comes to marketing, you got to go clear bottle or at least amber. Yeah. You can't. I mean, People you can't have. The yeah. They don't want to. They don't want to pretend to know what it might look like coming off. The <laughs> you know, the bad sweater is his Christmas version of a spice drum, is basically what it is, and it's you know an homage, evidently, to his dad who wore really crazy, stupid sweaters at Christmas. The digits is probably by far the best thing that he's done. Okay, you really like that one. I do. It's good. Nice. It's Scotty Pippen's hand on the label. Yeah, we, we. The branding makes no sense though. No. Put Scotty Pippen's face on the label. Yeah. Yeah, but then that's might, kind of how Dave Finney operates. His his wine labels are really, really weird. Probably work for him in the wine industry, though, yeah. right? That's but why he like brought it over, and you know, it's like, yeah, that People don't want silly labels like that with whiskey. <laughs> so how's the bourbon scene here? Pretty good? It's or? crazy. It's cutthroat. It's super competitive. Okay. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, the big push right now is for these big stores to bring in as many barrels as they can whether they're good or not. You know, us small guys sometimes seem to suffer because we don't have quite as deep pockets, but yeah. we still get some good good allocations. How do you handle your allocated products? I'm really different than anybody else in town. I don't pander to any of the secondary market people. If okay. you're a regular customer of mine, you get put on my allocation list. So I'm screwed, so what you're saying? I come in with a camera driving cross country, like, no to this guy. I get it. That's, cool. That's fine. Well, and it's Fair not necessarily point. that I would say no to you. It's just, do I have it? And has anybody claimed it yet? Yeah. Because obviously, you see, we got Old Elf Cigar Cut and a couple other things down there that are allocated that I've given all of my requests out to. So. And then nobody, yeah, the Rebel 10. Yeah. The Rebel 10 is probably the only one that's kind of hard to come by back home. Most of these are just sitting on shelves everywhere in Alabama or Georgia. And that's Georgia. kind of the way that Pikesville, when it first came out, it's kind of like, you know, pin hook and all of those, you know, when you couldn't get them, everybody yeah. wanted them, and now you can get them on a regular basis. Yeah. The, the sales have just plummeted. So, yeah. Funny how hype helps, right? Uh -huh. Most of our buys are small distillery, regional distribution, like the Ben Holiday stuff. Yeah. Like, we're, we'll be at Ben Holiday on the 16th doing a barrel awesome. pick. Like, we're... You know, Crittenton's out of Mississippi, just has distribution in a couple of states. Y'all yeah. don't need me to tell you that Blanton's is good or that Weller Antique 107's a fantastic bottle, yeah. but you might need me to tell you that Crittenton's is good stuff, so. My goal is to try and get people, and especially people that first get into the bourbon game. Yeah. But the thing that's so frustrating is they want to start off with all this allocated yeah. products. Yeah. It's like, figure out what your palate is first, because I think the key is being able to find a bourbon that you can drink every day and really be pleased with it versus having to try and find all of these unicorns that you know you just end up getting frustrated because if you started this year you're 10 years back because you know everybody's on a list in front of you or you got to yep. spend a lot of money to get into raffles that you may or may not get anything from so um you know it's important to find those little treasures that you can get on a regular basis appreciate it it's nice to meet you but hey nice Yes, ma'am. Nice selection. Uh, wonderful person to talk to there. But I was screwed from the beginning. You see, did you see her face? Yeah. The the pain of she not wanting to say, yeah, yeah, you're pretty much screwed there, but She wasn't expecting me to be that direct could, with it. I was hoping that maybe I could pry the door open. Enough. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's all it's all good. We got a sixty dollars stag. So I'm not. Like, I'm not uh, it's, everything from here is just gravy. So we went to a high V the other day. I think they had some stuff. I think we I think we were selective. I'm trying to remember. There's so many stores we've been into. I want to say there were some barrel picks at high V that we just blazed right on past because we were being selective. This was not number four, but number four was closed. Back so we're gonna, we're gonna try back up. This is number five. High V. Ezra Brook Cash Strength. $50 for a Ben Holiday. That might be one of the better prices I've seen on it. <sighs> Have you had the double oak Sagamore run? What do you think? I like it a lot. I'm more of a rye and I like the well, I mean, I like the Sagamore Rise. It's probably a little bitter. Okay. Ish. It's not as toasted as like the Woodford or Elijah Craig, but it's still really good. 96 proof. I've, we see these back home, so I, I'm going to yeah. wait. I'm going to get one of those. And aren't they, they're in Baltimore, is that right? Yeah, Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore, okay. I think it's the guy that owns Under Armour, owns this. Well, must true or not. So I'll be wait till I head up, head up the East Coast. We're going to head up the East Coast next year. I'll buy, I'll buy all the Sagamore then. The early times has been out for hasn't been around here in a while. 
Okay. And those are the metal tops. And old granddad 114, I haven't seen in a long time either. So Dude, I stopped in a store, Cincinnati, but across the river in Kentucky. And he had 50 cases of old granddad just sitting there right as you walked in the door. And I was like, I've never seen so much old granddad. He's like, yeah, I got a hundred more cases downstairs if you really need some. One bottle's enough. I had, you know, that's all I need is one bottle. Ooh, here we go. Look at here. I am taking that right there, my friends. Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof rye for $59. Hallelujah, amen. Y'all say I don't like rye. Well, I say I don't like rye. So it's not on y'all. I'm not blaming y'all for it, but I, I'm picky. This is a good one to me. I really like this guy right here. I have one at the house. Someone gifted to me, but I need a backup because it's that good. Boy, you think it's worth $60? Oh, yeah. yeah. What proof is it? This one is 126.3 proof. 126 proof single barrel barrel strengths right there. Have you tried it at the uh, XL? Yeah, I have the Innkeepers blend. I think that's the one I bought, um, Dixon Deadman. So I bought that one. I tried it. Uh, it was good. But when brothers just always see the bottle shape, it, it grabs my attention. All right. So how do they handle their allocated stuff? Do you know they have? They a, do raffles. raffles. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty strict on it. They put out the Jack Daniels barrel proof rye. So. Must not be allocated. There's a Rebel Master Distillers Collection. I like the Rebel Master Distillers Collection I have. It's not something I go back to a lot, but it's good. Yeah. So overall, a successful night. Like anytime you get a stag like that, it's a successful night. But that plus some Goose Islands that I'd never tried and uh, a Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. You're happy with that, right? Yeah. I mean, that's good. I mean, you got a you got a bottle or two. I did. I did. Okay. Got me on the Goose Island. We'll try it out. Video's not over. I'm gonna go in the morning and I'm gonna check out that store again. And I'm gonna see, you know, see if they see if they hook me up. The clout helped me get that stag. I mean, there's no lying. There's no doubt about it. Man recognized me when we walked up. I didn't even have the camera going at first, y'all. I missed him uh, yelling my name there, but. Uh, the clout helped us. I'm gonna go back and see what the clout can get us with the manager, even though he probably won't care. I don't know if you want to join me in the morning or if you want to go ahead and give your sales pitch. Barrels and Bark, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, yeah. What's well, the channel about? We all do about barbecue and bourbon. I compete barbecue competition and have a food truck, and then I love bourbon alongside. So try to do a mixture of both, Re bourbon reviews and barbecue recipes. We were supposed to start this one as beer, bourbon, and barbecue but the bourbon stuff took off and it's like, let's just stay in our lane, bro. Let's just do bourbon. Give the people what they yeah. want. I'll see y'all in the morning when we go back to, uh, to do a clout check. It is the next morning and things are not looking good. I've got to hit the road. I can't be dilly dallying around all morning. And they don't look open. Like Google says they're open, but that open sign over there in that window is not on. So I don't really know how to open this conversation here to try to make it fluid and not awkward, but we're gonna go see if they're open and we're gonna see what we get. How's it going? I swung by here yesterday and talked to Russell and he said if I needed to know about bourbon, I need to speak with the owner. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? TJ. TJ, I'm Scott. We were passing through South Dakota on a 16 day road trip. I was just trying to learn more about the local bourbon scene. Well, it's pretty much like anywhere else in the country, yeah. to be honest with you. The allocated stuff is really, really short in South Dakota. Okay. And that, when I say really, really short, Last month I got one bottle of Eagle Rare. Wow, yeah, it's tough. And they go by, you know, like the Buffalo Trace stuff all goes by um, the Sazerac purchases and all that, so we have to kind of go with that. So if we buy a bunch of Sazerac stuff, 99 is Fireball and all that, then we can- You get a little bit allocated. A little stuff. more allocated than most people, but I mean, that's just the way it is, but it's not a lot. What's coming around now is Buffalo Trace is coming around. Okay. Uh, as in the real Buffalo Trace bourbon, as far as everything else, it's, it's slim pickings. It's slim pickings. It's, where does it, I mean, does the whole state not get much or does it go to a particular state, location? The whole so. state. So now everybody's going to store picks. So we've got one, two, three, we've had four or five now. Yeah, I think we had, picked some of that. Yeah. Definitely bought some bottles yesterday for sure. Yeah, as far as the alcohol stuff, I don't do auctions or anything like that. I throw them on the shelf. So you just throw them out when you get them? I throw okay. them out, or if I have a regular customer that comes in and says, hey, I'm looking for this bottle, then I maybe hold on to it for them. But yeah. The world has gotten me, it's, it just, it's too much of a hassle to hold on to it and you know do auctions. I can't do auctions, I don't have room for it here. Some other stores do it, and then everybody's different, so. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely respectable to just throw it on the shelf. Anything interesting that you've got on the shelf? 
Oh. And we're not always looking for allocated stuff, right? I mean, we're, we're always looking for something interesting. The only thing I can point out is the newer stuff that we've gotten in that's actually been hard to find. Oh, we've done reviews on the... Well, I'm there on the 16th to do a barrel pick. Heaven Hill has done really nice lately. They've, they've, they've sent out some Elijah Craig, the, the barrel proof, and toasted okay. barrel. We've gotten through that. I put that out. That goes pretty well. People like that bottle. I've seen Although a lot of toasted barrel on this trip so far. Yeah, they've uh, they finally... I think they opened the gates up on it finally, really. It's a new thing now a lot of guys are doing. I know a lot of you like certain owners in town are doing or hiding their bottles. Yeah. So they're tucking them behind something, something here or there. I don't know if I necessarily understand that. A lot of folks will put them in like a non-bourbon section. I won't do and that. It's like that. I mean, I understand rewarding local customers, mm-hmm. but like, all right, man, I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank it was you. Dave? Scott. Scott. Okay. Yep. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was unfruitful, and we were not able to avoid a little bit of awkwardness there broaching that subject. It did not help that my guide from yesterday, Zach, gave me the wrong name on the owner. <laughs> Made it even a little more awkward. That is uh, South Dakota in a nutshell. The next hunt, probably be in Wyoming then. <laughs>